Sleepyhead. I'm not letting you go to work. Wait, what? What? Everybody, listen up. Welcome. To morning, the morning, 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 morning. You're gonna talk. Get on the phone. We're refreshing this. Can't we have to? Pretty awesome, huh? Jump in on our text line at 441140. Everyone is talking about it. You must know that. The drive starts now. Jay Marshall has been a phenomenal addition to the program, and uh, we do love him to death. And it's funny because I loved Jay before I even met him. He was very, very active on social media and other places too, I'm sure. But I knew Jay through only through social media. He was at a different, uh, I believe, a different cluster uh, as well as a different entirely cluster. different cluster for 12 years. But Jay was always a lot of cluster. I never forget. Jay was always very supportive, <laughs> and about, about active, and retweeting and tweeting stuff and you know very very active during the whole uh, king seattle saga and now uh, jay's a part of the program running the video cast kdk.com and uh, doing so much more for example when kyle and i were talking about refreshing our opens which i believe we've had for five years now we've had the they, same six seven and eight o'clock opens i don't think that's correct no i believe they changed when the voice guy came when we got a new voice guy is that so? Except for three for madness. <laughs> three for madness. <laughs> well, they've been around for a damn long time. And I, I'm, we're going to keep the music. Uh, California Love is always going to start the show, or at least is going to continue. Yep. Uh, Jet in the 7 o'clock hour, that's a callback to the old night show, open. And then uh, and Muse Uprising actually is a callback to the uh, to the Fight for the Kings. It's actually a callback to the Muse show. To the Muse show a couple weeks we ago at. that Kyle and I didn't go to <laughs> together. So we'll keep the music. But, yeah, we got it. We got it. So when I said we're going to change all that, and then I, I don't think Jay could hear because our mics were on, but I said by we, I mean, you know, Jay, who apparently does a lot of real awesome things I didn't know about. I didn't know he could do production. I didn't know he could do. Yeah, dude, he's it, the man. Yeah. Well, uh, wow. Why isn't he the person, Kyle? Well, Sexist. okay. You know what? Wow. I should, Jay, what are your gender pronouns? Uh, awkward. Male. <laughs> Sam Amick. <laughs> Will join us momentarily. I call him Salmon Eggs. That's my guy from the uh, Athletic. Wow, maybe he's a vegetarian. Doesn't eat eggs. Mm. I know he's not a vegetarian. You know how I know because I've hung out with him for ten minutes and he's never told me. <laughs> Sam will join us, and then Dave Yeager uh, will join us at the bottom of this hour at eight thirty-five. Um, what did I want to ask you? Oh yeah, uh, Kyle had said Ichiro. Uh, in his update, but he said it, some caught my ear. He said Ichiro Suzuki, which is his name, which is his name. But I think he is more often called Ichiro without the Suzuki at the end. And I was thinking that'd be an interesting list to make: universally known athletes that are known by one name only. Shaq, Kobe, LeBron. Yep, Shaq, Kobe, LeBron. And now, do you count MJ? Because I think if you say Mike, that could be Michael Jordan, that could be Mike Tyson, even if you say Michael. But when you say MJ, you know it's one of two people. It's Jordan or Jackson who's not an athlete. Yeah, but that's then then you're talking nicknames now. That's that's more of a okay. nickname than, okay, so, than a first name. So that, Zion. Okay, would Jordan count? I, I'm, I'm asking. I'm trying to figure out the rules here. Like if I say, hey, dude. Is it first or last name or think, just first name? I think I, – I, that's what I'm trying to figure if, out. Here. If we're talking, if we're talking hoops, and I say, "Dude, he's the next Jordan," you don't think I'm talking Jordan Bell? No. I think maybe you're talking about Harold Miner out of USC. It used to be called Baby Jordan, or maybe Jordan Clarkson. Maybe Jordan Clarkson. Mm, great point. Uh, maybe Jordan Sparks, Jordan American Crawford. Idol. So maybe okay if we just Warriors go. Legend. Now here's the thing, and I'm not trying to be silly here. Was I'm truly not trying to be silly here. I honest to God, I'm ignorant. Oh boy, about I this. can't wait. No, 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 no. Was each is Ichiro his first name? Because don't in Japan, don't you yeah, like from, in China from, too? From what I understand, uh, at least this is what I remember hearing. Uh -huh. Is Suzuki is like a really common surname? Okay, so that's why he went by his first first name, name which is and Ichiro. His first name is like on the back of his jersey and all that. Right, because I tried learning about this. I think it was with Yao Ming. And I and and how and it wouldn't say Ming. It said Yao. It said right. Yao, but Yao, I believe, was his surname. I believe his first name is Ichiro. No, no, I'm talking about Yao Ming. No, I know I, right. that. I, I don't you. know. I don't know nothing about. Anyways, Yao. okay, so Ichiro, we'll count that as first name. I think you're right. So if you're just going first names, uh, what? But what about the babe? 
Everyone knows who you're talking about when you say the babe. Well, that counts because his name was Babe Ruth. Yeah, but his name was George Herman. Yeah, but who really knows that? Okay, no, I, I agree with you. I agree. I no, I agree with that. <sighs> Let's see football. Mm. Tom, <laughs> Joe, Joe, <laughs> Bill. I guess Peyton. Peyton. That's kind of lame. I mean, Ichiro is one of those select few in sports history where you just knew him by the first name. For those of you that are sending me share Madonna and Pink, uh, no athletes. Oh no! And I don't think. Athletes. See, here's what I don't think Babe Ruth counts. Uh-huh. It's a nickname. Now you're talking nicknames. To again. Jay's point, though, his name. Was Nobody George knows Herman. his name is George Herman Ruth. I get that. Right. So does Magic Johnson? If you just say Magic, does That's that a, not count again, too? No, his name is Irvin. But so you're saying Magic uh, does it? You wouldn't count Magic? No, as, right, because uh, it's a nickname. Okay. Then maybe it's we a do completely need, different then maybe conversation. Maybe we do need to include nicknames. But, because, it, but it says Magic Johnson on his basketball card. Like okay. it's identifiable. Like you call him Magic Johnson. Right, but is is that his legal first name? That doesn't no, count. Right, it doesn't right. matter. We just does. have to adjust the rules. Matter. Yeah. Because here's the other thing. Like his first name. When I say Juju, you don't know John Smith Schuster, but you know Juju. Right. Right. So, all right. Let's get to Sam. Kyle's starting to get heated. I'm, gonna I'm have to mad, flip. dude. I'm going to have to flip I'm the script. I'm angry. Again. Days since Kyle had a meltdown. Zero. Joining us right now, a guy who's absolutely. It's just permanent ink. <laughs> guy who's known for meltdowns all over the place. Do not challenge Sam Amick. Do not get him to lose his temper, or it will be a bad day for you. From The Athletic, the one, the only Sam Amick. Hello, Sam. Oh, Sam's not turned down. Man. I'm sorry, Sam. We didn't hear you. You were turned down the whole time. Hello. Good morning. I said, what did I do to you? Jeez, there's some backstory here when I lost my you-know-what on you? Remember that one time? I do, I do, I do. It's funny you say that. I wrote something. Uh, Hold on, wait a minute. Sam's about... never lost his temper on me, so unless I forgot. <laughs> he <laughs> that, said the that... cushy <laughs> poker player build thing really angrily. <laughs> I know, exactly. If anybody got mad in this relationship, it's this guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, at least I'm not bringing you on my show and then blowing you up for leaving the game early. That was brutal yesterday. <laughs> dude. Who? I didn't even hear it. Did they blow me up? No, it's, it was when you came on. Like, Damien's first question to you was about you leaving. You said, like, hey, do you have sources that say I left or something like that? You won't remember. That was how the yeah. whole interview started. I'm like, wow. Talk about blowing Sam up. I don't think up. he knew, though. I, I think we stumbled into that. I don't okay. think he knew that. I think I just got uh, I just got exposed. It's all right. It's all good. By the way, for the record, uh, you are, you know, when I hear the word Dave and the name Dave, you're the only one that comes to mind. So I think you're part of this group. Sam, I'll and I'm not on... I'm not on Team Kyle. Um, sorry, Kyle. I think the nickname should count. I was just going to ask that. Okay. Okay. Oh, um, okay. Oh, boy. He's because mad. if you, like, here's a funny example. LeBron James and Kevin Durant, you say LeBron, we know who that is, but that's a very distinct first name. Sure. Uh, like, is it Kevin's fault that his parents gave him a name that's so, you know, non-distinguishable? No. I mean, I, Kevin, right. Kevin could be better than Jordan. But if you say KD, we like, know who oh, it is. Kevin. Well, sure, yeah, yeah, if you go to the initials, that's fair. Right, but that's it. <laughs> that I, is fair. I'm not talking about, like, quality of player or anything. I'm yeah, just, no. And if you want to include nicknames, that's fine. Okay, I think but we But the should. initial conversation was first names. We were still trying to figure it out. We were we were workshopping the bit, Kyle. Okay, I know, we were and that's work- fine. And I think we've workshopped it to, yes, because I think KD should count, Magic should count, Babe. Okay, great. Uh, uh, Let's pl- count them then. Players that you know them off of one name or a couple of initials or whatever, and Ichiro, each Ichiro's on that list. It's not like you're thinking about. It's not like somebody says, "Oh, did you see Ichiro?" And you're like, "Who, Bob?" Which one? <laughs> right. Which Ichiro are we talking about? But then there's some people too, like uh, or the Mick for Mickey Mantle. You know that. But I think if I say if I say, uh, "Dude, Pete was amazing," like, you're like Pete. Well, yeah, Pete Rose. Like some there's some players aren't known by one name. Can I, you know, I've lost touch with my, my baseball roots over the years, um, so I'm not an expert on this front. Uh-huh. But, I, uh, Dave, I saw you tweeting about it last night. I mean, Ichiro really is a Hall of Famer, correct? <laughs> oh, no, Sam. <laughs> you, got my, you got my trolling, dude. You got caught up in the okay. net. Somebody, yeah. I was like, what? I, I know I lost touch, but come on, man. <laughs> No, every <laughs> once in a while I'll do that. And so I said something like, I might have got caught up in the moment, but I really think he true is a Hall of Famer. And then I'm having fun with the people that are like, what are you talking about? Yes, not only is he true a Hall of Famer, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. He might be a, a unanimous 
Hall of Famer. Oh, I caught Sam up in the netting. I'm... You well, not only that, but like from a sheer, <laughs> I'm feeling older these days standpoint. I'm like, man, this dude has been doing this since <laughs> I felt young. Right. So 2001. Good metric. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sam Amick with us. Yes, we will talk a little bit of basketball. Sam, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I apologize. I try to remember, and I usually do uh, most, if not all, of our conversations. I think the last time. Um, we talked about Coach of the Year candidates. I want to say you and I both agreed that at that point, I think Mike Budenholzer uh, would have been our vote. Does that sound familiar, or am I getting that completely wrong? Yes. Okay. No, that sounds right. Yep. So I was thinking about this last night, and we've seen this happen throughout the years. Sam, I think if I blank everything out and just start from scratch, I I can create in my brain an almost undeniable case for Greg Popovich. And obviously things have happened since we last talked. But for example, let me just give you a, a situation. Let's say, uh, what's there, 10, 12 games left. They lost at home to Miami last night. But let's say over the next 12 games, uh, it's a seven and four uh, or seven, uh, eight and four, nine and three finish on top of the nine in a row. It, is it still there for Pop? Or do you think it's one of those, it's Pop, we expect this out of him. It's got to be somebody else deals. Yeah, I think there's probably too many other strong cases for like Pop has to just take it to the next level, and you could argue that he has. But uh, you know, if here's the the more puzzling one for me, not to jump off this first sure. thing is is that I didn't even have Doc Rivers right. in my top three. Yep, and he and he honestly might be my pick right now. Yep, uh, because you have second. a record. Yeah, like you have a record that is right there with the Spurs and you do not have perennial all-stars like DeMar DeRozan and Marcus Aldridge and, and even a high-level all-star caliber player in Rudy Gay. Sure. Um, you know, you have trades where you lost your best player in Tobias Harris. You have a culture where Steve Ballmer set the tone for this because he told them internally that he would, even though they traded Harris and they got a bunch of future assets and they were rebuilding on that track, that he didn't want to miss the playoffs. And so, uh, Doc, I, I read about this yesterday on, in the Washington Post, that he uh, had, like, quasi-therapy sessions with his players to convince them that, no, we are not tanking, and let's go. Right. So, uh, But Pop's candidacy is, is tremendous as well, you know, and, and it's incredible how they not only have gotten to where they are for the scope of the season, but, the, you know, if you talk about what have you done for me lately, they look like, you know, one of the most dangerous teams in the whole league. I was looking at the Spurs uh, losing Deontay Murray, uh, having Aldridge and and having Aldridge. Um, why am I blank? Uh, DeRozan, uh, and then I, I love how you bring up Rudy Gay because it's true. Rudy Gay is actually having a, a really good kind of unexpected year. Um, if you make a great case for the Clippers, in fact, it's it, it's almost tough. Not I, I hate to. I'm not throwing shade at Mike Budenholzer, but you know you got Bledsoe, you, you have Middleton, you have uh, Brogdon, you have. Uh, uh, obviously that Giannis kid who's okay. Um, like, I get it. But... Oh, yeah, that's not an impressive list, to be honest. Uh, like the, the names, that's where that's where I think Budenholzer's strength of his candidacy lies, is that, you know, Middleton finally got an, an all-star berth this year, but he's a, like a, he's kind of like a, a fringe East Coast all-star. Sure. Like, you know, um, Bledsoe is a guy that nobody thought he was going to be this good. And, you know, Brogdon's obviously heard now, but, um, my argument for Bud would be that if you break down their system, he, he put his stamp all over what the Bucks do. They shoot like 15 more threes per game this season compared to last. Uh, he unlocked Giannis in the kind of way that has him obviously possibly winning the MVP. So it's another strong case, but it's it's just not as shocking as I think Pop or, or the Clippers. Sam Amick with us. I uh, want to touch on, on the Lakers real quick. And one of the reasons I do that with you, if people are wondering, why, why do they always talk about the Lakers? Is Sam's written a lot of really good pieces uh, on the Lakers, uh, has had great access to Jeannie Buss. And uh, I, I think along with, uh, I would say, reading oh, pretty much everything Sam writes, uh, his, his insight into Kevin Durant and his insight into the Laker organization are, are two of Sam's specialties. And I was, I was looking at a list the other day that had, I think it was the Knicks and Lakers uh, with the, the worst winning percentages over the last five years in the NBA, which is just amazing in itself. And we talked about the passing of Dr. Jerry Buss uh, and, and how things have gone since then, coincidental or not. Um, we've talked about Magic Johnson, Sam, and, and, and looking at his history. But 
going into this summer. I mean, yet again, they're going to have probably another top three pick. They have LeBron James. Uh, nobody's selling the team. So so do you see Jeannie Buss getting more or less involved, Magic Johnson still being on the, uh, being on the hot seat at all or not? Where do you see the summer with the Lakers? Um, I think there could be some pressure applied to the front office, but it would likely be more on Rob Palenka sure. than it would Magic. I think Magic is, you know, his relationship with Jeannie creates a, a heck of a buffer uh, in terms of like, you know, I mean, that that's her big move. You know, she's not going to give up on that big move after one year. Um, it has been messy, but, you know, I, I certainly 95% think that Luke Walton is gone. Um, yep. But it's hard, it's hard to not, I don't know, like, I mean, I've talked to the people at the top who you kind of alluded to about that topic within the last month, and they swear that it's not as much a foregone conclusion as we say it is in the media. And that's where our, that's where our jobs get hard because it's like, well, but wait, everybody else says it is, you know. Um, but who's that next person going to be? Doc Rivers shot down the rumors about him going to the Lakers. There's certainly a lot of Ty Lue speculation. Um and but who is that coach who's going to be better than Luke Walton and take them to the next level? I don't know. So you know that part is is going to have to unfold. And then just the question of do they get somebody to play with LeBron, especially when Father Time is knocking louder at this point on that door yeah. than I thought that, that we thought he was going to. It's just LeBron did not. His numbers were good this year, but the nature of his injury, a soft tissue groin injury, that kind of you know indicates that that kind of fallibility and age combined with uh, terrible optics when it comes to leadership and, and how bad they played as a team. I think they got a lot of work to do. Sam Amick of The Athletic joining us. Coming back to the uh, – we'll finish with the Kings here. Uh, don't want to just keep rehashing what we, we <clears throat> usually talk about with the Kings, but you were there uh, for at least the good portions, uh, as many were, uh, of that game versus the Nets, and then obviously a, a historical collapse. They take on the Mavericks tonight, by the way, right here on Cage to K. Luka Doncic, Marvin Bagley featured uh, in this game. Uh, what is? Let me just ask you from uh, 50,000 feet, Sam, your general read on the on the team, uh, on the way they're finishing a little lackluster. Um, do you do you think that carries into the offseason as far as decisions being made, or do you chalk it up to the schedule and the, and the quality of opponent? Um, I mean, I think it, it's, I think it has substantive kind of, I think it matters. You know what I mean? Yep. Like I think, I mean, quality of opponent, they should be able to beat Brooklyn at home. Sure. Um, and especially up by 25 going into the fourth quarter. So that's, it's funny. This is the fun part of you and I have talked about of me being based here is I get that even though I don't cover the Kings per se anymore, I still get that kind of in the community experience. I was just at my son's school and it's like walking through the, you know, the front office and randomly, you know, one of the, the folks there says, God, I can't believe that loss to the Nets, you know, yep. <laughs> people are hurting over it. Um, I, you know, the coaching stuff is still going to be something that we monitor. Uh, you know, my understanding is it's just that, that thing that, that I wrote a lot about earlier in the season, the you know, conflict in the front office with Brandon Williams, the assistant GM and, and the fact that Dave, you know, agree or disagree has trust concerns about the folks above him. Um, that never got resolved. Right. And so what is that conversation like in the summer? And, you know, where does it lead? Because on one side you have, I guarantee you're going to have the pressure of Dave and his group uh, saying, okay, we, we, had, we did a really good job this year. Let's get a, a long-term extension. And also I want you to take care of this other problem. And then you're going to have the organization, I anticipate, saying, um, okay, you can't tell us what to do outside of your own scope, and and does that mean that we're not going to remain together? So I don't really know what direction that's going to go. Well, then let me ask you this just final question here with, of course, Coach Yeager coming on this show in five minutes. Um, let's <laughs> Good segue. I know, right? Jeez. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, listen, and I'll say that with Coach Yeager coming on in five minutes. Let me remind everybody that I've had coaches back all year long and do hope they re-sign him, but let's say – that that does not happen. Let's say coach and the Kings part ways at the end of the year. I, I am curious. Do you think Jaeger is in a position where he'll be sought after and on a bench next year? Or do you think odds are um, he's back on that merry-go-round? In other words, has he done enough here 
to make him a coveted head coach going into next year, or if you were his agent, is his best move if it's available to stay right here? Uh, there's a third option that is from the life standpoint, you can't kind of gloss over, which is, uh, revel in a job well done. Um, reconnect on the personal front, um, do some media work, sure. get paid for doing nothing. You know, like he's still getting paid for next year. Right. So, uh, his name's not going to be, you know, uh, I mean, there's buzz around his name now because of the job they've done this season. And so the Minnesota job is one that certainly is always tied to him. And so who knows, do they keep Ryan Saunders? Do they, you know, does they become part of that situation? If that, it, these are big ifs, but I mean, I, I could see if the, if, if he wasn't back in Sacramento, I, I, I'd probably handicap, you know, taking a year off and doing media stuff and, and then figuring out what he wanted his next move to be. He'd probably be pretty good in the media. I think. I think it'd be interesting. Yeah. On those, uh, on, if, hey, if Tom Thibodeau can nail it, I think Dave Yeager can nail it. <laughs> you know. That's a low bar. It is. A little bit. Sam Amick, The Athletic, go to theathletic.com. Uh, best coverage of sports there is around uh, in the written form, especially. Uh, these guys give journalists uh, a lot of room to uh, show their talents, and they've picked up quite a bit of talent over the last few years, uh, obviously Sam being one. You know we talk to Matt Barrows quite often and many, many others that we tap with the athletic subscriptions lower than a, uh, a beer at a bar uh, in these days, and they always have specials going on. So check them out at theathletic.com. And Sam, we always appreciate your time. Have a great weekend, buddy. I appreciate the love. Hey, can I throw a thought exercise at you as I leave here? Oh, please do. They're, they're going to give me a podcast. I need a name. So, you know, come up with a name, would uh, you? Um, oh. I'll do it right now. Okay. You know, we can circle back on it. Kyle's going to be all over it. Okay, so. Sam, I have got your back. I'll have a DM ready for you in the next 10 Well, minutes. I don't think I can announce. There's going to be a co-host. It's another uh, East Coast-based NBA writer. So it's a two-man setup. And, uh, and we're in the workshopping phase. So the two-man game. I, I, there you go. <laughs> That's where, like, the basketball analogy podcast which is a real podcast. Like that's where that was born. Cause I think we're probably going to stay clear of the low post and you know, the, the pick and pop and the, the heat check. We might go non basketball vernacular, but we'll see. I just, I want to throw that. I respect your guys views. So just no, throwing that your way. That's your first mistake. Se- secondly, <laughs> I, I think uh, see Kyle's going for like creative names. I want something that plays off of Sam or Amick. I feel like that, that's 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 where I'm going to go, Sam. I'm going to send you like 90 different things that play off of your name. So if you get a ho- if you do get a co-host, it's going to screw everything up. Well, no, there is. There's 100 percent a co-host, so uh, don't go too far down that road. How about Sam and friend? <laughs> Sam plus one. <laughs> All right, we're working on that. We'll involve the listeners too, buddy. Thank you, All right, guys. Take Thanks. Yeah. I always like that Sam and friend. <laughs> we'll take a break. Dave Yeager next, right here. You know what we should do instead? Uh, we should head to athletics.com slash tickets because there's new inventory for opening day. It's now available. One of my favorite people there is, Coach Dave Yeager, joining us next right here on The Drive Sports 1140 KHDK. One is a pompous egomaniac, and the other guy isn't as important as the first one who's writing this stuff for me to say. The Drive continues now. Our right, thanks to Samuel Amick. I see you guys. Uh, <laughs> I see you guys following through with names for Sam's podcast. Please keep them coming. So far, an amicable podcast is my leader in the clubhouse. Uh, joining us right now, I, I think he's, he's already up and running and getting ready for tonight's game versus the hated Dallas Mavericks coming in tonight, six thirty pregame. Seven o'clock tip, and I love to. I'll talk to Coach Dave Yeager anytime, any day. Uh, but it's always extra cool to talk to him when he has something coming up. Uh, coach Yeager, not just an awesome coach, also awesome in the community. And you guys know how much uh, that means to all of us. We're going to talk about uh, his event coming up uh, and what's going on as well. Coach Yeager, good morning. How are you? Superman. How are you guys? I know you're a Superman, dude. Come on, we all know that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh... Yeah, we got a long ways to go. We're uh, certainly we're disappointed about uh, about the other night, but we tried to approach it as a as a teachable moment for our young club and and uh, how we can get better out of that. And uh, you know, get another one tonight. That's the fun part of of uh, winning pro sports. Is uh, you know, there's enough to usually wait too long before you get an opportunity to to play again. 
you know, I, I used to, you went right into it. See, I was going to ease in about two, three minutes before I even talked about the other night's game. I was going to talk about other fun stuff, but I'm glad you at least brought it up. I, you guys as a coaching staff have, I guess, the experience and discipline is the best way I can describe it, of understanding what it's like from the inside. Not to say you guys weren't pissed. I'm sure you were. I freaked out and, you know, broke things at my house and did all the dumb stuff fans, you know, I, I do. Um, but what do you do at that point? Is there really any way to spin it other than it happened and uh, it's a learning experience and you build on it? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I think especially with a young club, uh, that's exactly the way that you have to approach it and, and you know, make people feel bad. People feel bad anyways, you know, and uh, those guys are competitors and, um, you know, we didn't do the things we needed to do to get it done. And, uh, well, what happens next time that's the, we're in that situation or maybe we're the team that's on the other side of that? How do you how do those kind of games go and how do those kind of things happen? And here's why. And so we sit down and show it to them on the tape and some of the decisions we made and, uh, you know, basically a lack of focus and um, just kind of relaxed. And uh, and that's, it, it can happen. And then obviously it did. Coach Dave Yeager joining us, uh, you know, last thing on that, um, and forgive the sloppy phrasing, Coach, but my heart's in the right place. I'm not trying to place or remove blame. But as a coach, I was looking back through the play-by-play in the fourth and I saw you called four timeouts. And, and you're subbing people in, subbing people out. Is it, uh, for lack of a better term, is it like a helpless feeling for the coaching staff sometimes because ultimately you, the, the players have to play and, and you can't be out there on the floor? It, 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 is there a frustration there at some point? Yeah, you know, there's a level of experience. I mean, you know, I've coached a lot of games and seen a lot of things. And, you know, it's uh, you can see it coming, and that's why I subbed back in so quickly. Uh, we ran some of our guys deep into the third quarter because – to put that thing up as, as far as possible is what, what I was trying to do. And I went back to them very quickly in, in the fourth quarter. And, uh, you know, it's uh, you're just trying to give guys a chance to be successful and put them in those positions and uh, do everything that I can do or things that I can control and uh, made them aware of it very early in the fourth quarter that this thing could get nasty. And, you know, I don't do that very often, so I think that it's not lost upon them when you do say that stuff. Uh, I think, you know, it's a young guy, a bunch of guys, and uh, hopefully we'll get better from there. Coach, and I know that that this probably comes as a shock to you, but I'm not an NBA coach. Um, <laughs> but when when a player like D'Angelo Russell starts going like that in the fourth quarter, what what do you guys try to do on the fly uh, to slow him down, even when he's making a ton of tough shots? He did. He did. He made a couple tough shots. There's no doubt. He t- he took a couple quick ones. He took a couple perhaps. What would be considered bad shots, but at that point, when you're down 20, you go, you know, what the heck? Uh, I'm a score. I get it going a little bit. But it was the the part that was more difficult was how quickly he was scoring, uh, being able to go end to end, especially after free throws and those kinds of things. So, uh, you know, we got a uh, lacked uh, lacked aggressiveness uh, offensively. I think in some of those situations, we all think, you know, gosh, you could just get a stop. Well, if you could just get to the foul line, you get a layup, or get you know get to the get to the rim a couple times, you can get your defense set up a little bit easier. Uh, we settled for a lot of jumpers, and, and we turned the basketball over, and then your defense is on the run, and, and uh, I think we we fouled four times in the first two minutes. So then you get a little unaggressive and not wanting to foul a guy and put him at the foul line because they they're going to put their head down and, and go to the rim, and those kinds of uh, kinds of things sometimes happen, unfortunately. Coach Dave Yeager with us, and Coach, you know we're fans of yours and have you back, and uh, we, we mention you quite often in, 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 in games and post-games and et cetera, but I also do my best, as does Kyle, to uh, – it's not just Dave Yeager, and I know you're the first person to say this. You know, we you have guys uh, like Brian Gates and E.T. and Jason March and that whole staff that are just so freaking awesome. And I had a chance yesterday. We had a, a little mini event out there with some of our uh, station clients and sponsors uh, out there at Golden One. And uh, Coach Gates was running kind of like a video chalk talk in one of the lounges and uh, uh, wasn't giving away state secrets or anything, Coach, but was running through. uh, It it spent about half an hour just just showing like uh, off an Excel sheet and how to how much video you guys watch. uh, Of, of, you know, before you play a team or uh, from past matchups and. I think a lot of people, I've covered this game forever, Coach, and sometimes I just fall into this habit of thinking, okay, pass the ball, shoot the ball, and run around the floor. Do Have you gotten to the point over your career where, where you get tired of watching video or are you still addicted to it? Because I can watch that all day, I feel like. <laughs> it's fun. I mean, it's what I love to do. It's, it's a passion of, of all of ours. And, you know, our job is to leave no stone, stone unturned. 
uh, and to give the players as much information as possible um, without um, paralyzing them with information because that can happen too. There is there is a saturation point where guys are just full. Like you're saying, like, man, sometimes it just gets you. So, like, for example, earlier in the year, we'll watch a lot of team video, a lot of team video through the preseason in the first 10, 12 games. And then I back it up a little bit, and then it's a lot more individual video. And then – depending on how the season, the flow of the season is going, then you got to bring, reel it back in a little bit. These are the things we need to do as a team because those things need to be heard by a head coach or from a head coach. Uh, hey, this is, you know, we're holding guys accountable to this. This is our scheme here. This is what we're trying to do. So, uh, yeah, we do a lot of, and especially with a young team, we're always thinking development mode. Uh, where can we be in two years? How do we help grow these guys the best way possible to give them experience as quickly as possible? And it certainly has been a terrific season. And, uh, you know, we've shocked a lot of people, and it's fun. Uh, but we know we have a long ways to go, so we always keep that long view in mind. So when you look at a guy like Marvin Bagley, for example, who's not only you know just turned 20, I think, but also – uh, played one year at Duke and, and left high school early. I mean, he's basically a, a one-and-done guy, high school guy, and, and played a zone uh, a defense at Duke uh, for his one-year career. When you look at some of the strides he's made on defense, I, I think watching that video kind of turned me on to it a little bit too, Coach. These guys haven't even scratched the surface. I mean, at least half of them haven't even scratched the surface of their potential yet, it seems. Yeah, the best the best is yet to come. That's what uh, we're very excited about, and you know, the other night, obviously, we, we get frustrated. There are some of the close games that, that we've lost. We were frustrated. But uh, those are opportunities to teach that, you know, we just blew eight layups tonight. Like, we've got to finish better around the basket as we get stronger and, and looking for contact and maybe draw fouls more often and not shy away from contact or the turnovers that happen throughout the course of the game. And so a lot of the close games that we've been in have not been tit for tat coming down the stretch. It's us trying to catch them, and we finally catch them with two and a half minutes to go. And you know, at that point, then there's very small margin for error, miss shot, or a turnover at that point. Whereas you're up one, down one, and it's going back and forth. And those are the kinds of things uh, uh, we'll get better at as, as we go on. Uh, silly sports radio question here, Coach, but last thing, uh, and then I want to get to your event. More difficult from a coaching point of view, more difficult to come back from 10 down, more difficult to maintain a 10-point lead? Uh, depending on what kind of team you have. You know, if you have an older team and you have, you know, several go-to guys, then you just squash it. You're up 10, and, you know, that's a wrap. As other way to look at it is how good are you defensively, uh, then you'd rather obviously be up 10 because, it, you know, if you're a really good defensive team, being up 10 can feel like for the other team that you're up 20. Sure. And so uh, I think it's uh, with a younger team, uh, perhaps it's the other way. You know, we're gonna, hey, let's, let's uh, you know, put our hair on fire and just attack these guys. We're down 10. But the way how fast we play, that's really like only down four or five, and we've done that all season long. And so that's an evolution uh, as your team grows up and, and uh, gets more experience, gets stronger uh, as you develop go-to players. And I think we, we're going to have developed some of those guys from within. And then, you know, you don't know uh, how free agency goes and trades in the offseason as well. Coach Dave Yeager, um, we've talked about this being so active in the community. In fact, we talked a couple weeks ago, and uh, I saw the pictures and videos uh, when you were bartending uh, for your foundation down Urban Roots, and that was a phenomenal event. Now uh, today, I was or, just pouring beer. I, I can't sling some drinks. I, oh. I can I can sip the handle and pour some beer. That's <laughs> Okay, so he's yeah, exactly. So you're you're pouring the tap for everybody down there, and then tomorrow, uh, want to let everybody know, uh, there's a tasting of uh, King Cutter. Uh, you got a little bit of food and uh, a silent auction, all raising funds uh, for the Dave Yeager Foundation, and uh, we'll give out the address here uh, after uh, after we let. Well, I can do that right now, actually. Thirteen twenty two V Street uh, in Sacramento, uh, Urban Roots once again, and that starts. Uh, at 7 p.m. King Cutter. Is there? Did, how did you come up with the name King Cutter? I know the King part. What's the Cutter part? Uh, I've gotten into uh, cutting horses and uh, cutting cows, and, and uh, my girls are into riding horse, and I wanted just to get better at that so I could hang out with them and uh, be around what they like to do, and it ended up being getting into cutting horses, which is an interesting sport and uh, pretty exciting. It's a little bit like ro- riding a roller coaster, where you can't see the turns coming. I mean, there's two animals involved and just a Yahoo like me sitting up there. So trying to hang on and uh, that's where, that's kind of where that came from. Okay. I got to ask you, and I know we've talked about tractors and stuff before, and you know, I'm not, not really a farm guy, but coach, when you say, what is, what is cutting horses? Like, so you're going to be on your horse and you're going to go into a herd of cows and you're going to cut a couple out and you're going to, they're going to try to get back to the herd and you're going to, the dance begins. You get one cow in front of you and it's uh you can't let it get back to the herd. And, uh, 
it's it's fun, man. It's really fun. Okay, that very athletic horses. That very is very athletic. A lot like uh, defense, uh, playing defense, uh, athletically, basketball wise, sliding back and forth, and you know the ho- the horse does all the work. You just try not to get in his way. I'm really glad I asked because that is exactly that is completely different. I thought like cutting horses was like branding them or something like it, you're doing something cutting like physically like cutting physically them. cutting a horse <laughs> right, for right. a sport or something that did not sound fun to me what you said that actually oh. sounds very fun it's exciting it's really cool all right coach uh you're the man you know that and uh, if you don't we'll remind you and uh i know you got those guys uh ready to come out of the gates hopefully uh, as you said with their hair on fire tonight versus dallas it's going to be a, a fun game to watch luca and Marvin and, and De'Aaron and, and maybe uh, I don't know. Are you gonna save it for that? Are you are gonna grab the PA mic like Doc tonight with uh, with Dirk, or are you gonna are you gonna leave that to be a surprise? <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't be doing that. But uh, look, he said yeah, that's that's terrific, and certainly love to see everybody. If anybody wants to come out, and uh, you know, you got the the, the event uh, that you can direct your listeners to uh, buy tickets, and it should be a fun night tomorrow night, and also all day tomorrow. We're gonna have, we have a thousand kids coming out. Uh, for Ag Day, so we're teaching our kids, uh, give them opportunity to see where our food comes from, and uh, it's a good time of year to start doing this stuff. It's really fun. You can check the link right at the top of his uh, Twitter account, and while you're at it, go follow the coach at Coach Jaeger. That's J O E R G E R. Tomorrow, Urban Roots, a little tasting a King Cutter, some bites, silent auction, raising funds for the phenomenal Dave Jaeger Foundation. Always doing fantastic stuff. And we'll make sure to retweet that from all our accounts out there uh, as well. Tickets available right there. There's a link on the Twitter account. Coach, you're the best. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Appreciate right. it. Bye. You take care. It's Coach Dave Jaeger. I love people being active in the community, and he actually cares. And that's that, that goes a long way with me. Hey. It really does. Hey. Uh-huh. Do you know what NFL player likes to cut horses? No. This is a really good one. Hold on. What NFL player really likes to cut horses? Nick Foles. You slow clapping him, Jay? Nick Foles Nick Foles is getting Nick Foles gets a slow clap? Like Nick Foles, like to put a small cut in a baby horse. I thought you were gonna say Marcus Mayer Iota. No. Nope. I mean, it makes sense. It's a it's a good one, but Nick Foles like, literally cut a baby horse. We'll take a break. Can we just break for the whole year now? It's we terrible. haven't seen Kings fans showing this type of exultation in a long time. Sports 1140 KHTK is your home of the Sacramento Kings. Every game with all the play-by-play moments. World spins, wrap around inside. What a pass for the setup and a layup. Scored by Marvin Bagley. Pre- and post-game coverage, game night, and all of our local shows cover the Kings unlike any other. Sports 1140 KHTK is your home of the Kings. Capital Casino is Sacramento's number one. <laughs> I'm sorry, the text line. God, the te- everyone's on a delay, so the text just started to come in. There's like six in a row. There's like, <laughs> there's like six in a row. Kyle, no, don't do it, Kyle. <laughs> Big fans of Kyle's jokes. Uh, stay in your lane, Kyle. Capital Casino is Sacramento's number one poker room with limit, no limit, hold them, blackjack, pie gal poker. Backer at my favorite game, of course, three card poker. Peyton Manning's favorite game, Omaha. But also the best food, the best service, and the best games for you, Capital Casino. 411 North 16th Street in downtown Sacramento. For more information, just log on to capital-casino.com. And please gamble responsibly. 1-800-GAMBLER. It's the end of the show. But it's the start of your workday. <laughs> for a cold one, it's what's on tap. Here's what's on tap. What's on tap? The text line offered one today. Brought to you by what? Umbrella hats. I love when the text line gets involved. Umbrella it's from the hats. 530. If you want to protect your head from the rain without using your hands, and I won't read the second part that involves your wife, <laughs> use umbrella hats. So, and so, to ensure a life of abstinence. <laughs> there you go. Umbrella hats. Somebody on the uh, Twitter machine said they want to start calling you Extra Mile Kyle. That's because fair. Because your jokes are so funny. 
Then somebody on the text line said they don't like your jokes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, just just uh, some ether from the 209. Oh, shockingly. I'm starting to wonder what Kyle actually offers the show. Buddy, I've been wondering that. <laughs> <laughs> Was that, did they text that in crayon? Uh, uh, hey, time to head to athletics.com slash tickets. New inventory for opening day is now available. want to thank uh, Coach Dave Yeager, also Sam Amick, appearing on the Fire Wings Hotline. 21 different flavors to choose from. Firewings.com. Just wing it. What's on tap? Well, I'll tell you what's on tap. Uh, more like what's on uh, when the dam bursts because oh! uh, everything is on tap. One of the best sports days of the entire year is today. Yes, Kyle Madsen. It's time, time for the Coors Light cold hard fact of the day. Here's Kyle Madsen. And Kyle's here to tell you all about it. Brought to you by Coors Light. March Madness starts today. That's, That's right. a fact. That's not your cold hard fact it of the is. day. It is. <laughs> Extra mile, Kyle. <laughs> Can but, I go an extra two miles real quick? Uh, would love you to, Jay. The Phoenix Suns have just signed James Jimmer for debt. Let's go! Did, is Jimmer. That now? That's Jimmer, official. Jimmer is on the first name list. Oh, my God. Jim, oh, my God. Jimmer's going to be playing in Sacramento in, in, Saturday. Oh, Jimmer got my God. signed. Jimmer got signed the day March Madness started. You know what? Robert Sarver was probably Googling March Madness and yes. stumbled upon old Jimmer highlights and rushes into James Jones' office. We need to sign this guy. I am Robert such... Sarver's not that smart, is he? Oh, God. I'm so excited. I saw that yesterday. I saw they were talking. Put Jimmer in and let him loose. He's going full D'Angelo Russell on Saturday. That Jim, would be amazing. I want I want Jimmer Fredette to be awesome so bad in the NBA. I really do. So does Jimmer. So does Jimmer. He's such a good dude. By the way, he's 30 now. It's James. <laughs> it's James. <laughs> <laughs> Kings Mavericks tonight. March Madness all day long. Enjoy yourself. Kyle, how long do we have here? Yeah, we're out. Oh, okay. Well, for Sam Amick, Dave Yeager, Jay Mars, Kyle Madsen, I'm Dave. See you tomorrow morning for the Friday edition of The Drive. Two pairs of Eric Church tickets to give away tomorrow. Tune in. Two per. Two per. Jim Rum is next. Sports 1140 KHK. Bye-bye now.